Hey guys, before we're going to start today's video, I just want to give a quick update on the issue with Last Clausen. Personally, I have like made my cut with it since I've posted my videos. However, there are still many people in Denmark who think, ah, oh, it, it, who knows, maybe Mapton made mistake too, maybe Hirsch made mistake too. But guess what guys, it's not that way, simply because Lars has copied most of his files from Hirsch and Maptoon. And especially because the Hirsch and Maptoon software itself is tested, it's um, like, it's not the best, like you can go a few more HP and um, newton meters more in torque, but uh, for that it's stable, we give kind of a warranty, especially Hirsch. So guess what guys, if their software wouldn't work, there would be a lot of people who would have an issue, and especially if you say, oh, Hirsch might not be good too. Well, personally, I don't like Hirsch because I find it boring, it's for old people, but you have to keep that in mind. They've been the, um, the tuner by, by the factory. So, if they wouldn't know what they were doing, they wouldn't be the tuner. As simple as that. So everybody's saying like, oh, maybe Hirsch has problem too, who knows how many people are unhappy with Hirsch. It's like saying, well, you bought a sub and it's crap, so go fuck yourself. And with Maptoon, I will be very honest with you. Maptoon, I find the tunes are really good, yes. I'm not going to lie, it's not like I get paid by them, and no, there's no conspiracy. Oh, you just want to make last so bad. No, I, I'm from Germany, I don't care what you are doing in Denmark. Um, if you want to go to Las Clausen, please just go. And when something doesn't work, don't tell me, don't say no one wants you. So do what you want, I am really sticking out of this. I just made my point, but his tunes are crap, and they have nothing to do, legit nothing to do, with an actual tune. It's just more an engine ripper. So please be so kind. Leave me alone with that shit. I made my point, I showed everything, and no, we didn't manipulate the files. Like, seriously, uh, some of the people who sent me their files they have been barely capable to do it. I had to explain them so hard and so often how to do it. And even then I sent them a guide or, you know, some, some, some links and such. They were like, how do I do it? So I... In my personally, I think someone who's barely capable of setting up an interface is not even going to be able to make edits of the software that bad. Like seriously, you really would need to know which maps to edit. And these people, I know for sure, they have never done that. So stop telling me something from uh, who knows if the files are from last. I mean, we had have seen the, the chat messages and such, and uh, we have enough evidence. So okay. Let's cut the topic here. I made my point, and now I really want to teach you as I've promised. And what we're going to take a look at today is the interfaces. I will also make a video how to set up an interface. I will upload it later today because I'm such a lazy fuck. Actually, I already made that video, but my PC crashed. Yeah. Uh, so I have to record it. And um, yeah. Now let's start. Basically, the guide we are going to... I'm, I'm making here now is Photronic 8, but it's mostly the same Photronic 7. And the first interface we're going to take a look at is the ELM327. Some of you guys might already have this or know about this. It's the cheapest interface and the most generic one you can buy on eBay or AliExpress or Amazon or wherever else. The thing is, this interface, it can work with a Tronic can flasher, but it doesn't have to. I personally have one of those at home. Simply because I had them as a leftover from my old car, I had a Volkswagen, very bad choice. And, um, well, for me it doesn't work. I don't know why, maybe my interface is not that good, maybe it's somehow bad, but it simply doesn't work. H however, if you have one at home, you can definitely, uh, definitely try that. But one thing you have to keep in mind is that you need the cable-based version, like the USB-based one. You cannot use the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth version or anything else. Simply because the latency, so basically the, the communication, would be too unstable and too slow. So you need the USB-based one. If it works, it works good. If it doesn't, crap. For me, my favorite of interfaces, it's this one, the so-called... Wait, better picture... Yeah. The so-called OBD-Link SX. I will make the guide based on this. 
because this interface it's like 40 to 45 euros sometimes it's on sale on Amazon for like 25 to 26 just take a look if it's too expensive right now take a look at it later and um, yeah the benefit this one is very stable like it works it always has worked for me on Tronic 7 and Tronic uh, 8 and um, you also get a generic diagnostic software so if you have a few other vehicles which are not Saab or um, you just want to have it this is the way to go in my opinion this is the best bang for buck like 45 euro yeah 45 euros and you get a decent interface with some software and basically you know have something to start off so take this one trust me on that an alternative to this let's say you are rich or you made made a good um, good pick is the Quasa leaf it's this it's this kind of interface um, I think yeah maybe this one and uh, yeah basically all of these Quasa interfaces were very good very very good but very expensive too if you have a chance to get one on, on eBay for like 50 euros or maybe up to 100 it's okay it's a very very decent interface if you ca can get it for this price it's, it's very good very high quality the best thing on the market actually the next thing this is also very interesting if you have Tronic 5 it's a so-called CAN USB adapter and um, yeah I'm not going to stick too much into this as you can see it's around 100 euros but it's also a very decent interface very nice reading and writing speed especially for Tronic 5 as I said uh, a few other guides on the Tronic Tuning form you can look up for this like how to wire it up in Tronic 5 and so and uh, yeah this is a very decent interface and now the last one I would show you it's the so-called combi adapter by John C and um, I will link this in the description unlike the other interfaces I will not make any affiliate links any like anything like that no not just just go and look for that I will write down the names of them so you can really understand them but yeah this one, the uh, combi adapter, the big benefit of this thing, you can not only just read normally over like the, the OBD port, but uh, you can BDM. And what BDM is, it's basically the ability to read out directly from the chip, or let's say you have messed up the entire ECU because of some um, power supply cut and now you want to reflash it and it doesn't work there's a restore feature in Tronic can flash it, it doesn't work so you then go and get a BDM software from the TXU side and uh, then you can just restore it by BDMing I think this is this is on Tronic 5 you know BDM pretty neat very neat if, if you are afraid of messing up and then not having a spare ECU as a backup but it's also very very good for regular reading very high speeds reading and flashing but uh, with 120 euros a bit expensive but I think in my opinion if you have more than 7 and Tronic, Tronic 7 Tronic 8 go with it it's the best thing you can do my recommendation so yeah and this was already it for today's video and I hope you enjoyed it and I'm going to make the other one now see you guys